Hey everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm going to show you how to draw pale skin using color pencil. First, I'm going to focus on the four main base colors of the skin. I've done this for each of my skin tutorials and I'll link that below. Um, they're going to be Ochre Brulee, Scarlet Lake, 50% French Grey, and of course, Peach. As you can see, I've already laid down the light points of the face with white, which I recommend doing with any drawing using color pencil. Always start off with white. And I'm using that ochre brulee to fill in the orangey colors that we often associate with pale skin. I'm layering some of that color on top of the white to make a lighter version of that ochre brulee, but I'm applying light pressure to make the layering easy. Um, P.S. Do that no matter what color you're using, always apply light pressure, especially if you're messing around with whites towards the beginning of the drawing. If you do decide to apply harsh pressure, do that towards the end when no going back is not an issue. Now I'm going in with peach to accentuate that orange hue. Um, and yeah, as you can see, I'm filling it in. It's starting to look more like a face. Now I'm going in with that 50% gray. Um, and we're going to show the shadows using that color. Try not to concentrate that color too harshly so that we have room to embellish that skin later on with the browns and blacks that we're going to use. And last of the base colors will be Scarlet Lake. Now that beautiful vibrant red might be an odd choice for me to use because it's so pigmented compared to the other base colors, but adding those pops of red lightly, I really want to emphasize that lightly, um, can really help to emphasize the rosiness in the skin that um, a lot of pale people have. Since I finished my base colors, I'm going to go back in with that white and highlight the skin more harshly so that even if I add color to that white, its pigment will remain on that paper. Now, even though the drawing looks pretty decent and you could really just stop there and just add black to the dark points and you have yourself a drawing, we're going to layer so many more colors to create that perfect skin. We'll be using browns and oranges and purples to make the most realistic skin that we can find. But keep something in mind, skin isn't just brown and peach, it's gray and orange and purple and red and gray, oh I already said gray, and so many variations of those in-betweens to look like skin. That's what I want you to focus on, layering lightly to build up that pigment. Now I will be going back in with those base colors, like I kind of used peach earlier in the video, um, and treating them like the rest of the color pencils and layering them where I see fit. My biggest piece of advice in drawing is draw what you see. When you try to shade in a portrait, you're probably not going to shade in the same one as me, so you have to use color in the way that you see fit. If there's red to be used, use it. Don't let your eyes deceive you with claims of monotonous peach and brown. The most bland skin that you could draw is still full of color, so use it. Now I'm loosely focusing on parts of the skin. I don't follow a strict structure, but I enjoy moving around and filling in what looks the best to me. Um, the shadow of that eye that you can see me drawing right now um, is what I struggled with the most actually because the lighting is really quite odd. But I wanted to use odd lighting to emphasize my use of gray to create shadow. Plus I really love shadows. I think it makes a portrait much more interesting. Um, don't like light coming straight in front. I think it's kind of boring. Finally, I have a little black in there. I'm adding it to the eye. I think it just really helps to like tie in a drawing once you add in that black because it intensifies the shadows. It allows for the black in the eyes and even in the nostrils to be more known, even though I haven't gotten to the nostrils yet. But that eyebrow is starting to be filled and now the drawing is going to make a lot more sense in my head. Sometimes I kind of have to fill in things with black even though it might not be the best time to do so, only because I need to visualize it because I might get a little distracted with how how many like holes there are in the drawing that I want to fill. Ooh, I'm going in and intensifying that chin shadow. Fun fact, I love a good chin shadow. Again, I just like shadows. But I'm just adding a bit of light red, a brownish red, a little bit more of that gray. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm adding a little bit of rosiness to that nose, which I really like. I thought it was a nice detail. And of course, more gray. Because even if you think you added gray, probably add some more. And I'm just trying to clean up that nose, make it look more realistic, adding the colors because I kind of want to be done with it already. At this point, I'm getting a little frustrated with the nose. And that's okay, you can get frustrated with some of the things that you're drawing. Um, just try to like keep going and if you don't like something, then maybe add a little black to it like I do and see if you like it better. Oh, that chin shadow is so good. It's so nice. I love it. And now I'm going to start moving on to the lips, which is really going to make it look like a real drawing, thank God. Because sometimes the lips can distract you a little bit if they're not filled in. And I'm just adding some pinks and some brownish reds and more pink and a little bit of gray in there as you'll see. Just trying to get the most realistic looking type of lips. I did leave some of those white marks here to show a little bit of dryness and um, crevice in the lip. I think that's really important. And leaving like a subtle highlight right underneath the lip, if you can see that, is like really the key i think to making your lips look realistic here i'm adding lilac which is a purplish color um again i was just doing what i felt comfortable and what i saw and what i felt best represented the most realistic lips that i could see so always trust your gut instinct and draw what you see not what you feel like i said before i'll say that for the rest of my life because that's a piece of advice that i really try to follow to the best of my ability it's not always perfect but your girl tries And now I'm using a colorless blender from Prismacolor. This is kind of like my hidden gem secret. Um, so practically, if you just go ahead and apply that to the color, kind of harshly, um, it's going to go ahead and blend in those little like crevices that you see, those little circles that are kind of irritating sometimes. You get that a lot with color pencil. Um, but only do this at the end when you're absolutely certain that that's like the last thing that you'll use and you're not going to apply any more color because it can create wax bloom. Um, so yeah, just use that colorless blender if you want. Um, you don't need to use it, but it can make it look a little smoother. And that's it. That is going to be my pale skin tutorial using color pencil. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to check out my other skin tutorials if you want to. And thanks for watching.